Hello there, my fellow Chaos Corrupted washing machines, and welcome back to a new lore episode about the infamous Dark Mechanicus. Last time, we did discuss a few things concerning the reasons why the Dark Mechanicus came into existence to begin with. Turns out that more than a few among them didn't really like the Emperor. Anyway, as far as today is concerned, we're gonna talk about some of the naughty things that they did during the Horus Heresy, and what happened to them afterwards. Because this, being a grim dark universe, means that they are obviously still around. I am your host, for today the Dark Toaster Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? To help the War Master achieve his goals, Kelbor Hal oversaw the construction of the mighty battleship Furious Abyss, in the orbital shipyard of Thule, a former asteroid. This had been towed by the Mechanicum into the orbit of the gas giant Jupiter in the Sol system, far away from prying eyes and questions. This formidable warship was unlike any other of its kind. It was so heavily armored that it could withstand even a concerted assault from a planetary laser defense battery. It was the greatest and largest vessel ever assembled by mankind, unique in every way and powerful beyond reckoning. And, spoilers, they were gonna make two more. Kelbor Hal had sanctioned the construction of such a vessel because it suited his great purpose namely the burgeoning desire, or rather intrinsic programming, to gradually become one with his deity. The Emperor had sought to place restrictions upon the Mechanicus's ability to explore every avenue of knowledge, which might have led to a closer unity with the Machine God. Horus had promised to remove all of those restrictions, and perhaps even open new avenues of knowledge for the Mechanicus to explore in the form of his allies among the entities of the Immaterium. Faced with such a delicious choice, the question of Kelbor Hal's allegiance, and that of the Mechanicus factions loyal to him, had required just one nanosecond of computation. The Furious Abyss had been intended to become the new flagship of the treacherous word bearers. None could know of the vessel's existence until it was too late. Steps had been taken to ensure that remained the case. The massive battleship had been created with one deliberate mission in mind, the annihilation of an entire space marine legion. The word bearer's ultimate aim as part of the War Master's grand design was to infiltrate the realm of Ultramar in the eastern fringes of the galaxy, and attempt to destroy the Ultramarines and their homeworld of Macrag. In a final act of treachery, Kelbor Hal had the Jovian shipyards destroyed once the Furious Abyss was complete. For the workers at the yards, there was no time to flee to safety, and there were no survivors. Every tech priest, servitor, and menial present at the yards was burned to ash. None would discover the massive warship that had been fabricated upon the asteroid surface until it was much, much too late. A great deal of precious technology was lost during Fool's destruction, and so it proved to be a steep price for the traitor elements within the Mechanicum to pay. However, it had to be paid, for the absolute and certain secrecy required to bring to fruition the War Master's plan to destroy the Ultramarines. But in the end, the Fabricator General's will had been carried out, and the Mechanicus played a less known but equally important role in the tragedy of Kalf. Aside from the human component in the traitor's ranks, the powers of the Mechanicum and their kin were also of great importance to the war. Within the ranks of the burgeoning Dark Mechanicum, as they would become known, could be found the powerful elements of the Martian Priesthood, the Ordo Reductor, the Legio Cybernetica, along with many of the feared Myrmidon Destructor cults. And even more, a number of subcults which had operated for many years on the edge of tech heresy. All of these and more were drawn together by and to Kelbor Hal of Mars. With them came the support of more than half of the legions of the Legio Titanica, as well as dozens of allied night houses. And for much of the heresy, Mars itself was lost to the loyalists, 
while the output of other Forge Worlds like Sarum, Voss, Cycle of Wraithy and Stygis 8 had declared for the traitors. Other Forge Worlds like Anvilus, Encaladion and Ryza were paralyzed by the Civil War. Much as with Sarum and Cycle of Wraithy, Archdouchebag Horus had enticed other Forge Worlds into his cause with nothing but the lure of petty empire building and the freedom of experimentation. The Warmaster offered new treaties of alliance whose accords the varying rulers of those Forge Worlds would find a lot more to their liking than the old ones. By this pact, these Forge Worlds would serve the Warmasters, Airtag's new Imperium, just as it had the old. But where they had been used and bled dry callously in the past by a master who cared nothing for their power or prosperity, under Horus they would flourish and be rewarded. The details would prove much more tortuous and elaborate to finalize. But in secret, an agreement was reached. Even while in false faith, the lords of these renegade forge worlds continued to secretly deal with Malkador the Sigilite and his emissaries. Many of the Archmagi sought to play one side against the other, right to the bitter end. This effort ultimately failed when Horus was killed at the end of the Horus Heresy, and the loyalist elements of the Mechanicum succeeded in driving their chaos-corrupted Toaster Brothers away from their Red Planet. Many of the so-called heretics of the Dark Mechanicus fled into the Eye of Terror along the other traitors after the Great Scouring, when the Imperium recovered most of the territory across the galaxy which had been lost to Horus. At present, the Tech Priests and the Dark Magi of what is now called the Dark Mechanicus have pledged their souls to the worship of the Dark Gods of Chaos. Within the Eye of Terror, they continue to service and maintain the War Machines and War Gear of the Traitor Legions, the Traitor Titan Legions, and the other forces of Chaos with equal gusto. They plumb the depths of secret and forbidden knowledge kept hidden by the Ruinous Powers. Still dedicated to the acquisition of all knowledge in the universe, much like their loyalist counterparts, the Dark Mechanicus believes that their uncorrupted brothers and sisters are fools and ignorance. This is because they will never be able to fully comprehend the divinity that is true knowledge, if they cut themselves away from the secrets and wonders offered by the Dark Gods. The Dark Mechanicus sees the Omnissiah of the Cult of the Machine as being embodied in the power of Chaos Undivided, rather than the Emperor of Mankind. As such, they pledge themselves to the destruction of the God Emperor, who they believe is a false prophet who has led the rest of their fellows astray. The members of the Adeptus Mechanicus, on the other hand, are horrified by what they view as their Chaos counterpart's tech heresy and feel that the Dark Mechanicus knowledge is a blasphemous affront to the Machine God. At the same time, being who they are, they are always curious to learn more about what their Dark Cousins are up to. The forbidden psychosonic weapons of the Emperor's children, the gene atrocities of the hated Fabulous Bill, I mean Fabius Bile, the malign perversion of the Technoviral technology used to create the terrible Obliterators, all of these and more had been laid at the Dark Mechanicus' door. Hellish forge worlds bestrode by cyber-demonic overlords deep within the Eye of Terror ceaselessly churn out weapons and munitions arming the forces of Chaos. The renegades of the Dark Mechanicus had the honor of being among the first of the Imperium that were branded as heretics and they willingly fled to the Eye of Terror, where they could live forever beyond the Imperium's control. But the Eye of Terror was not the only region of space where these heretics fled to escape the Imperium's wrath. Though the Imperium is vast, its authority stretching from rim to rim of the galaxy, in reality there are vast swathes of space remaining hidden from the Emperor's light. These regions have many names, including, but not restricted to, the Outlands, the Wilderness Space, and the Halo Stars. Within them, whole civilizations can rise, prosper, and fall, without once knowing of the wider Imperium surrounding them. A perfect laboratory space for the members of the Dark Mechanicus. 
Thus, these evil tech priests of the Dark Mechanicus tend to be as varied as the region of space that they occupy. Frequently, heretics take the form of extended clans that share their knowledge only through their blood relatives. Maintaining a level of understanding about ancient technologies or local warp space conditions that astounds outsiders. The Adeptus Mechanicus is particularly sensitive to the existence of such heretics, of which those in the Meritech clans are a particularly egregious example. They will often press and even demand to other Imperial authorities to mobilize and capture or kill them as a matter of priority. Individual renegades sometimes slip into Imperial space to pursue their trade, but they find it a really dangerous place to live. If caught and identified, they are tortured by the Inquisition with no hope of mercy, and then they are turned over to the Mechanicus, who will do a lot worse. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Dark Mechanicus and their evil exploits in the Horus Heresy. Now that we're actually done with this introductory business, I can happily say that the next time we will be dealing with some exclusive Dark Mechanicus lore. Maybe their unholy disciplines, or artifacts, or rituals, or famous Dark Magi. Are you a fan of this faction? What do you like or dislike most about them? Let us all know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future episodes. Thank you very much for watching this to the end, and may the Omnissiah bless the device you're using to watch this.